Okay. Yes, that's so great. This question from Yelena Fisk. I would like to find out how the challenging routine of getting up so early every morning helps Rachel with her creative process and her life. That moves me to keep going when I think about people being motivated by, um, you know, or the notion of resiliency or discipline. Um, and it's this irony that the discipline is aligned with beauty or seeking beauty. So when I go to the beach, it's um, from an original transcendent experience, um, watching a sunrise for the first time. And it's an accessible way to access nature and fuel your work if you're a creative person. Um, maybe there are people that don't know your uh, practice of going to see the ocean at sunrise every morning. I had gotten to a certain kind of despondency and I didn't know what I was going to do. I knew the old way of life was falling apart for me, but that I wasn't going to fall apart. Um, and uh, irony. I had a tiny little dog, which was a suggestion of one of my surgeons. Um, he said, well, you're having some problems if you're going to be able to walk. You're going to function well. You're gonna, what you need to do is get a dog, a rescue dog, he said. And I said, you're crazy. I ended up getting Matisse, who had some uh, illnesses of his own, and he had to go every morning. Ironically, I learned through the needs of a dog and what it was like to experience the first sunrise. And so I didn't plan it. I had done over 20 years of um, only the face and figure, human faces and figures within my work. I didn't, I would roll my eyes at, at my father who would say I had salt water in my veins. Uh, he, I'm from a long history uh, in the family of sea loving, uh, sea captains, lobstermen, boat builders. And I would always, um, as a teen, um, mock it. <laughs> I wasn't in touch with it. Uh, so I didn't anticipate as the last person to think about uh, painting or drawing the ocean. And I suddenly accidentally witnessed something very, very profound. So thus, <laughs> Uh, began some experiments where I would scurry back to my studio and I began to just sort of mess around with lack of a better way to put it with small ink studies. Um, I was, I remember being in my pajamas on the floor of my studio and pulling out little scraps of paper thinking, well, if I just fool around with the Sumi brush, no one has to see it. I haven't wasted a lot of material and I can sort of make a fool out of myself and no one has to be the wiser. It's how you trick your mind into risk sometimes. I think, yeah, I think a lot of the questions have to do with uh, doing something every day um, and also the the, influ the influence of the ocean. Um, well, it's sort of like a mantra. Um, I had many years, I lost count, 32 years-ish of yoga. I'm less disciplined with it now, no question. But um, through that experience um, and through Zen practice and Buddhist studies, I became aware of the peace accessible, the awareness practice meditation, walking meditation. And so that combined with this really transcendent experience at the beach, which can only be described as religious if it, there's a component of that that's non-dogmatic, that's embracing of all faith. I had the best results. You know, they talk about what uh, conditions need to be aligned to make the strongest work. And I had studied what I thought I needed, um, but my work was changing. So I began to need to fuel the work more from being on site. That was a big change after um, the uh, interest in this overwhelming experience at the ocean. Uh, when I was working from the face and figure all those years, I was seeing the face as more or less a mask, an armature for color. And without as much pronounced color for a bit, and looking at black and white and shifting the scale. I needed something that was greater than myself, uh, something repeated over and over, certain sacred places that were accessed. They spoke to my spirit in some ineffable way, um, could actually um, amount to digging to a deeper place with the work. And the idea or the premise would be that if I, my interest in my zeal or my passion was strong enough for a visual stimulus like that beautiful horizon and how much it transitioned and changed every day, that if I kept applying myself in my slow learning way, that I would fundamentally shift 
the quality of my work, the depth of my investigation, that I would begin to see better, in other words, um, what I needed to see. And of course, naturally, you don't set out that way, but suddenly you're looking at luminous paintings like crazy. My uh, art history obsession got really um, funneled into depth with light and light through ocean water. And I began to look at those uh, artists in, in depth and uh, pursue their sights and uh, study their methods and then try my own monkeying around with uh, materials until I found uh, something that convinced me that it looked like ocean water and light. I'm not a morning person at all. It's the first thing everyone says. First they say, I'm never on Facebook, which implies that I'm always on Facebook, which I'm not, <laughs> I usually am painting. And then the second thing they say is I'm not a morning person. Well, I'm not either. I'm dying to stay in bed more so <laughs> than, than ever um, as I get younger. Um, but there's something that comes, you never lose in going out there. I had artist instructors in art school, uh, Wolf Kahn, you know, he would say, just go fish at the shore. Keep on loading your hook and fishing at the shore relentlessly. And I always felt as an art student, I had to do like 10 times the work of anyone else to get anything I wanted to uh, keep. Um, but I just feel like if I plug at it, uh, something accrues from all those uh, visual prayers, per se. That's something you said earlier really resonated with me about um Going, going to the ocean and being inspired to make something, but the way that you start, you know, by making like something very small and like a scrap or something that was kind of less precious or, you know, um, I think that a lot of people trying to start a new body of work or try to try to do something they haven't done before. I definitely felt that way when I um, moved to New York and started to kind of wanting to make something, you know, city, cityscape kind of pieces. And I had some little scraps of wood and started painting on those. And suddenly that felt like the best way to kind of approach a giant city was like to just take a little yeah. chunk of it. And I think that's funny to have that same feeling towards the ocean, because I think that when we think of the ocean, it's just like the bigness of it, you know. Um, Huge. So. And I have this theory that one, it might only be a theory, it might be completely false, but uh, it's served me well, that one can't do anything but tell the truth in front of the ocean. Yeah. That, <laughs> that it's something omnipotent showing itself, something that you really learn to revere and respect, especially if you see it in all conditions. It's so profound that you can't get it with words and you must paint naturally or draw and then you think, oh, what do I have to give? There was something about it um, that didn't feel as much about, you know, achievement or something like that, where you could actually get into what was happening and enjoy the process. And Dave Wade uh, has a question. He's, Dave is also an artist and friend. Um, do you see a battle between the forces of light and dark? I see a merger. I see um, the challenge being a reconciliation of, uh, of opposites. I think of those in tandem, day and night, you know, uh, sky and sea. There's something greater in the union of both experienced rather than independently. And it's, it's uh, pictorially coming into this new body of work where I have these two masses in a lot of the work that are um, asymmetrical and symmetrical. They're, they're just seeming to merge or nearly merge. It's like seeing two sides simultaneously without confusion. So I think that that's uh, a lot of the premise in the work without having pre-thought it. If I look at the whole body together, I see a lot of that attempt to merge. So one of the questions that uh, Linda Gibbs asked is, what determines your choice to work in black and white versus color? Which is something I was interested in as, as well. I had very special colorists as instructors in my life. I'm my mind is with Wolf right now because we just lost Wolf on and his wife, Emily Mason. And so I was really all about getting light from color and, and color interaction and so many um, years of working with the voice uh, in color that I felt honestly a little insecure about um, my skill set or, or rusty with my skill set in drawing. There was something about ink, I think, that led me in the side door. Ink 
had this absolutely gorgeous operatic singing voice on its own. So I didn't have to have any mad skills. You just get a loaded sumi brush and you watch what ink itself does. And you really, it's like catching um, a bird in the sky. I use that analogy a lot. Um, it's like letting material be material and then it, it leads you somewhere new. I found that the brush led me to some interesting investigations and I could see some more um, really strong value structure that way. And it felt great. Say if you had a really strong painting, one of your favorite paintings of all time, something from art history or something you'd seen in a museum and you photographed it in black and white, you can often see the strength of the work independent of the color. And I thought, wow, what if I didn't use color? It'd be, you know, I, I fooled myself into thinking maybe it'd be less complex. It's just differently complex. So um, so with the issue of photographs and my paintings, I'm a trained painter and not a trained photographer. I'm happy to share my photographs. It just seems natural. It's, uh, I'm lucky to not be someone trying to be good at it per se. Um, so it's a free place for me. It's a way that I can deal with composition and access light and have a record of my experience of being there. Um, and I don't, as I say, work from my photographs. I'm not a offended if other people do. Um, but I do see it's an undeniable connection there. After the fact, after my works are finished, I work from the memory of the experience of being out on site. To segue into other questions I've been asked uh, around, I'm a newlywed and I'm a newlywed to another painter who paints plein air really well. Um, <laughs> And um, it's an unusual experience I didn't anticipate in my life to have this overwhelming love um, uh, of the ocean and an overwhelming love of another painter. So we kind of fuel each other and I work differently. So that's kind of um, a nice thing that we could never work alike if we tried. We would never dare. Everyone has their own voice. This is um, something timeless, speaking of time, that I'm after with my work. I go and go and go to the same places that are very special to me. And um, I go and fuel myself from these spots. When I'm there, uh, something picks up that I hope accrues uh, a memory in my hands and uh, something comes out in the paint that uh, remembers uh, the experience into a painting that is moving or hopefully in some way accesses a sense of timelessness rather than uh, like my husband, who is after the timely, he wants the sense of the experience very presently to being there and right down to the specifics of the look of the place in a way. Uh, and I don't want to simplify it. It's so much more than that. Uh, and I won't speak for him, but I'm looking for something that's timeless and it takes me several sessions. And again, I don't work from photographs. I work from the memory of being out on site. And so then I have a record of my life experiences and a little bit of a disciplined structure. And then it's like a grid in a sense for all of those of us who went to art school and then a jumping off place at the same time. So it's, um, I think it's a futile attempt to ever say, oh, I just hope my paintings can be as strong as, as a, a snapshot or I hope my snapshot can be as strong as my paintings. They're different animals. And I like that, um, that I can have another creative place that shows where I've been and what I'm taking in as stimulus. And um, I'm happy if anything connects. You realize that it doesn't matter. If it's something that accesses somebody, that's huge. It really is a privilege to work uh, beside another painter who you think is very, very strong and to be in a sea of other painters, all of us connecting. And that's why I share on social media and Facebook. I really believe in either lifting the best work from the museums, teaching and extending that, or in my own work, lifting the best artists that are around me as much as I can and the best from nature. So we're all grappling it out together, trying to get something that convinces us that it's more than just a two-dimensional surface. D Dave Wade had asked if I was a mermaid. I confess. It's the only explanation <laughs> and um, it's in the fine print on the resume.